This is Lady T506. Welcome to my channel. And today I'm going to be doing the Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 3, Episode 6 review. The show starts off um, Sheree's hairstylist, Lawrence. He comes to Candy's, Candy's, I guess, studio or somewhere to meet up with her because he wants to, you know, start singing. singing. And, you know, Kim, Kim, Candy lets him know that, you know, if you're going to be working for me, you're going to have to be dedicated. And he was like, you know, once I get done with my, um, you know, doing hair and all that stuff, I'm yours. So she's like, okay. So. She listens to him sing, and he has a really decent voice. Then Kim comes in, and it's like, Lawrence, what are you doing here? And he's like, looking like, what do you think? And, you know, Candy tells her, you know, he's going to be working for my label. And, you know, Candy, Kim was kind of hating on Lawrence for a minute. I'm like, well, he's not going to be able to sell um, in Kansas. I guess you're like, she should be the only one working with Candy. I mean, that's all and good, but, you know, Candy's trying to make her money. You know, if Lawrence is going to be under her label, unlike the way Kim is then. Hey. Nene has a talk with her son, Bryce, about moving out and going to school and all that stuff. And, you know, he's still not really, a, you know, actually going by the rules. It's been 30 days of the 90 days of him moving out. And, you know, he said he's looking for a job. Well... You sitting right here right now playing pool. You could have been out at that time looking for a job. You know, it doesn't have to be in the field that you want. You're not going to write out the bat find, out of the bat find a field where you could be club promoting. Go to the mall, see if they hire Walmart, Kmart, something like that where you're actually bringing in money and actually saving it so you can move out. And it's just like, you know... You want to be, you know, a club promoter. Maybe you should go to business school to get all the whole aspects of, you know, club promoting. Not just the way he was. I think it was, what, last season where him and, like, a thousand people were in on one venture. Yeah. So, you know, he's like, well, do you know anybody who owns a club? And she's like, yeah, my friend Peter. You know, I'll talk to him and, you know, see if, you know, you can go work there. I did not know it, but Cynthia, her, the father of her child is Leon. You know, the actor, he was in um, The Temptations. He played David Ruffin. He was in Five Heartbeats. He's been in a lot of movies, and I didn't know that was him at first, because she's caught him by his real, full name, and I didn't know his full name, and he had on glasses. And then she's like, he's a you know famous actor. And I was like, I know that is not the same Leon. Because when he took off his glasses, he, I guess... I haven't seen him acting in, in a while, and he looked kind of slim in the face, and I guess, you know, age and slimming of the face, and he just looks different, and she's telling him how Peter wants to, you know, get married before he turns 50, he loves her, you know, he believes she loves him, so what to do, and I like that they are, even though they're not together anymore, they can talk about things like that, and, you know, he was like, you know, we look like the picture perfect couple but you know it just wasn't meant for us and he was basically encouraging her so yeah you should go ahead and you know marry Peter you know Peter seems like a nice dude Peter does seem like a real nice dude he's not gonna select the one that's just gonna like turn crazy because he seemed like he's at his point in his life you know I'm not for that craziness and I understood that Steve <laughs> I can't talk to face, sorry. Kim is in the studio trying to work on a new track that, you know, Candy set up for her called The Ring Didn't Mean a Thing. And, yeah, she was not, it was not working at all for her. She just could not, Kim can't sing. That's the problem. Yeah, she used, um, Candy used auto-tune for that last song that we talked for a party. And that was a good club song, but this song... I don't know if I didn't like it because of the song or the way Kim was singing it. And she um, asked Neely what she thought of it. And Neely was like, you know, I don't like, you know, when you had Don't Be Tardy for the Party, he was playing it for everything, for everybody. And, you know, I'm not feeling this one. We're going to get over to Miss Phaedra. Phaedra is at her office. And Latavia Robertson from Destiny Child comes in to talk with her. And Phaedra's like, yeah, I've known Latavia ever since she was a teenager. And she's with Destiny's Child. And Latavia was explaining to her that, you know, 
her and Beyonce, I guess they were there together that day of the uh, the audition of Destiny's Child. And, you know, she thought this was going to be like, wow, this is so cool. I meet all these new friends. We're doing what we love to do. But, you know, as their group got more popular, you know, her word was meant nothing. Well, I look at it this way. If I'm in a group and all I said was, ooh, I should have some input on what's going on. Whether I'm a lead singer or just the person says, ooh, every 52 seconds. And she was like, you know, they basically was like, you know, you're so low on the totem pole that your word doesn't mean anything. You have no say at all. And as, you know, the group dismised and all that stuff and you know she went got into heavily drinking and got a DUI and now she wants to get herself back together and everything and Cynthia appears to be the person that does that Kim and her little yard sale me yard sale is you know a week before you put signs up in front of road saying you know yard sale this location from this town to this town Kim has like four big stores just costing $800 a month. Where she's getting that money at, I don't know. Big Papa, I don't know. She got like all kinds of stuff in there like, big old, I think it's like a king size bed. Now, if you bought this bed thinking, ooh, this bed is cute, put it in your house. Don't, oh, I think this bed is cute. I'm going to put it in stores. She got all kinds of vases and Versace dinnerware and all this stuff just sitting in storage I thought that was a like complete waste of money so they outside in some parking lot somewhere you know trying to sell off her stuff and her dad he's like you know we selling this stuff we ain't probably ain't gonna get like the best price like you won't but we gonna sell some stuff she's thinking she's been to sell stuff for like five thousand dollars no you are not going to get what you paid for it you can't buy something for twenty thousand dollars and then think, well, maybe I can get eighteen thousand. No, people are not like that. One, we are in a recession, and two, who spends that kind of money at a garage sale or a yard sale, whatever you want to call it? She should have went to like a auction house or something, had that stuff auctioned off or something, instead of just trying to like sell it like that. While they're there, she's doggone hitting her assistant because her assistant accidentally put one of her daughter's um stuffed animals or something in you know stuff to get stole and she get mad at her dad because her dad's trying to sell stuff for cheap he's like we're trying to get rid of this stuff nene comes over and buys a bed phaedra comes over acting normal phaedra acting all stuck up as usual so they um i think it was Candy, Kim, Nene, and Phaedra, they all went to eat. No, it wasn't Candy. I think it was I think it was Cynthia. Yeah, it was Cynthia, Nene, Phaedra, and Kim. They all went to this little diner over there, like right next to the yard sale, because it was like 100 something degrees outside. Not to mention that during the yard sale, she had her daughters on the road. Got a sign. It's like about yard sale. But anyway. As they're eating, they're asking, you know, Phaedra, you know, when's the baby due? And she's like, oh, I'm seven months and, you know, the doctor's going to induce me. And everybody's looking like, would you quit lying about that whole situation? And, you know, they base, they keep on saying, you know, that's not, you know, I don't know what doctor would, you know, induce you at seven months. So she's like, well, he's already flipped now and he's already eight pounds. I have never had a child. But I know that the child ain't gonna do he's not gonna flip over to where he's like head down ready for birth until it's almost time for ready for him to be born you are seven months and one why are you having it how do you have an eight pound baby at seven months it's just not adding up and she's just going with her story she's gonna stick with that i'm seven months pregnant and my baby, so my fetus is so advanced that he's already flipped over, and he's so advanced and strong, and he's already eight pounds. It's like, oh, my husband, he was nine pounds, and he was born three months early. I don't know why she continues. I guess she just wants to keep up with face. That one to let everybody know, I got pregnant before I was married, and I gotta keep this up. They're steady. She just steady talking about the nonsense of her, you know, having her eight pound baby. Um, 
Cynthia and Peter, they come over to Nene's house for like a little dinner. And Nene didn't have a few ones and they get to talking and Cynthia's like, you know, Greg looks cute. She's like, Greg will be in his little house, his house coat tomorrow. And you know, Greg was like, you know, she over there throw a shade. And, you know, it gets, gets down to Nene and Greg talking. She's like, you know, we don't communicate. And he admitted he does, he's not a good communicator. And I'm thinking if you're going to have a good mar marriage, you're going to have to communicate with each other. So he storms off and goes downstairs. And, and Nene insinuates that Greg, you know, then cheated on her. She goes to show um, Cynthia, you know, where Greg lives at. Greg, they moved downstairs to the basement. So they are no longer living together. And I was really hoping that Nene and Greg will be the couple that lasts. But if they're having all these issues, I don't know what's going to happen with them. That's pretty much all that happens on the set. So I'm sorry I keep on looking at it, but I got like my notes right there. You know, I hope you thumbs up this video. Comment. Subscribe and tell a friend. This is Lady T signing off. Have a good one.